welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's my ranking of the top new single board computers 2023. And just to be wild, I've got six boards in my list this year rather than five. As usual, I'm going to be looking at SBCs which have launched and which I've reviewed on this channel in the past 12 months. And that means from the 1st of November 2022 to the 31st of October 2023. So let's go and get started. Right, at number six on my list, we have the Rock 3C from Radsa and OKDo. OK Although, if you're looking for a lower cost ARM maker board, it may well be your number one, as it currently sells for $35 or $42.59, depending on whether you want one or two gigabytes of RAM. The board went on sale in May 2023 and has an RK3566 SoC with four 1.6 GHz A55 cores and a Mali G52 2EE GPU. And this makes the Rock 3C more powerful than a Raspberry Pi 3, but less powerful than a Raspberry Pi 4. When it comes to connectivity, we have got onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. We have got a USB-C port for powering the board, same as we've got on almost all the boards on this list. We have got full size HDMI, hurrah, and a 3.5mm audio jack, also hurrah. Around the corner, in the usual places, we then have gigabit Ethernet, one USB 3 port, and three USB 2 ports. Back on the top of the board, we've then got MIPI CSI and DSI connectors for connecting a camera and an LCD panel, and we also have a 40 pin color coded GPIO connector. And then finally, of significant note on the top of the board, we have got an M.2 slot. And this is M keyed and can support up to a one terabyte NVMe SSD. The interface is PCIe 2.0 one lane, just like it is on the new Raspberry Pi 5. And on this board, we aren't finished with the storage connectivity with this slot, because if we turn it over, on the bottom of the ROC 3C, we find not just a micro SD card slot, but also a socket for an EMMC flash module, which is currently populated and has got an operating system on it. And so, at its price point, the ROC 3C is very well specified when it comes to storage interfaces. In terms of software, there is official support for Debian 11, which even provides decent 1080p streaming media playback in the Chromium browser and Ubuntu Server 2204 is also available for the ROC 3C. This said, operating system support really hasn't changed since launch, which is rather disappointing, and this very much determined the position of this excellent piece of lower cost hardware at number six on this list. Right, at number five on our list, we have this, the Odyssey X86 J4125 version 2. This is the third generation of Odyssey board from Seed Studio, and as the name indicates, it's an X86 SBC. Specifically, under the large heatsink on the base of the board, we have a quad core Intel Celeron J4125, which has got a 2 GHz base frequency boosting to 2.7 GHz as well as Intel UHD 600 graphics. There's also 8 GB of low power DDR4 RAM and on some models 64 GB of onboard EMMC flash storage. And talking of storage, back on the top of the Odyssey we find two M.2 slots, one of which can take a SATA SSD and the other an NVMe SSD. And if that weren't enough, down here we've got a standard SATA port and also some power connectors which you can use to power a drive connected to the SATA port. So the Odyssey really is a fantastic board for storage applications, as I demonstrated in my full review in March 2023. It's also a great board for network projects, because here we've got two Ethernet ports and they're both 2.5 gigabit. We can also obtain a 4K video output, not just from this full-size 
HDMI connector, but also over here, we have got a USB-C 3.1 port, and this has got DisplayPort 1.2a, so this can also give us that 4K video output if we wish. In terms of other connectivity, we've got a USB 3.1 port type A, we've got a couple of uh, type A USB 2 ports over here, and we've got, of course, a power connector, a barrel jack for power. I do like that. We've also got onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and we've got copious GPIO connectivity. The first of these GPIO connectors is 40 pin and it's Raspberry Pi compatible, and the second is 28 pin and it links to an onboard RP2040 microcontroller. So it's a bit like having a Raspberry Pi Pico integrated onto this board. In terms of price, as you can probably guess with this specification, this is an expensive SPC, with prices starting at $218 and rising to $298. And the price depends on which features you want, including whether you want the onboard EMMC flash storage and a Windows 11 Pro license. Talking of which, Windows 11 performance is nice and responsive, and of course, because this is an x86 board, we can also run any standard Linux distro. And so, there we are, the Odyssey x86 J4125 version 2. A very well specified x86 SBC, especially for networking and storage applications. Right. At joint third, so we have no number four on this list, we have these. The Vision 5.2 from Star 5 and the Lychee Pi 4A from Cypede. And these boards have got a RISC-V processor. And so, unlike the other boards on this list, they are not general purpose SBCs that I would recommend most people to purchase. Rather, these are very much hardware for those who wish to develop for or experiment with RISC-V computing. And so I did agonize about including these on this list. However, in 2023, without doubt, these are the two SBCs I've personally found to be most interesting and with which I've had the most fun. As I argued in a video a few months ago, today I believe there are three categories of consumer SBC purchasers. Makers who want to do projects, those who want a small, low-cost PC, including retro gamers, people who want to build a media player, things like that. And finally, die-hard SBC enthusiasts. And so, the Vision 5.2 and the Lychee Pi 4A are on this list for the die-hard enthusiasts who want to experiment with RISC-V. To briefly run through the specs, the Vision 5.2 has got a JH7110 system on a chip, with four 1.5 GHz U74 cores. This particular board has got four gigabytes of RAM, although there's also an eight gigabyte model available, with prices currently starting at $65 on Allnet. In terms of connectivity, we have got twin gigabit ethernet, four USB 4, full size HDMI, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, so it's great on the front edge, and then on the back of the board here, we've got our power input via USB-C 5 volt. We have got a MIPI CSI and DSI connectors for connecting a camera or an LCD panel. And we've got a 40 pin GPIO connector. And it is worth pointing out there's good support for this in terms of software from Star 5. I've managed to actually use this GPIO connector. And then finally, if we turn the board over, we can see the storage options, which are pretty extensive. We have a micro SD card slot. We have a connector for an EMMC flash module, and we've got an M.2 slot, which can take an NVMe SSD, which I've now got working here on the Vision 5.2. Unfortunately, we don't have onboard Wi-Fi, although I think I'll forgive them that, because we do get a lot of RISC-V hardware for our money. Similarly, the Lychee Pi 4A is also very well specified, and is in fact a more powerful RISC-V SBC than the Vision 5.2, although it does cost more. Here, the system on a chip is mounted on a SOM, a system on a module, which plugs into this carrier board, and the chip under this cooler is a T-Head TH1520 with four 1.85 GHz C910 cores. The Lychee Pi 4A comes with 8 or 16 GB of RAM, coupled with 32 or 128 GB of onboard EMMC flash storage, 
and is currently listed for $135 for the 832 version on AliExpress. Once again, we have got a USB-C power input on the board. We've got here the Wi-Fi chips. We have got onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on this board. We've got GPIO. We've got 3.5 millimeter audio and a full size HDMI output, which is always good. And then over here, we've got twin gigabit ethernet, four USB 4, and also a barrel jack that can also be used to power the board. So we have different power options. I do like that. And we turn the board over. There we are, let's have it the right way round. We do have our MIPI CSI and DSI connectors again, so we can connect a camera and LCD display if we wish. But we don't, other than the microSD card slot here, have any other storage options on the board. Remember, we've got onboard EMMC, so there's no socket needed for that. Uh, we don't have here an M.2 slot, so we can't use uh, an NVMe SSD. In terms of software, for both of these boards, it is highly developmental, which is what we should expect, given that the RISC-V ISA is still very new for end-user computing. This said, across 2023, both Star5 and Cypede have given us many updates to the software for their respective boards, and uh, as a result, we now have good Debian images for both of them, with the Vision 5.2 rocking a GNOME desktop interface, whilst the Lychee Pi 4a ops were very responsive XFCE. As I've noted already, I've decided to rank both of these boards equally at number three on my list because they're both boards from pioneers with the same goal of advancing the RISC V ISA. It doesn't seem fair to separate them out. They're bought at different price points with different amounts of power, but they're still very much, you know, they're in the same place. They're, they're both boards, which, as I've said, are not things to buy if you want a general SBC but they're both fantastic starting points if you want to experiment on the RISC V frontier. Right, at number two on my list, we have the Orange Pi 5, or more accurately, the Orange Pi 5 family, as there have been three Orange Pi 5 models launched in the past year. Specifically here, we have the original Orange Pi 5, which shipped in December 2022. And then 30 days later came the Orange Pi 5B, and in June 2023, the Orange Pi 5 Plus. And if you're wondering about the differences, the 5 and the 5B are pretty much identical, except that the 5 has an M.2 slot, but no onboard wireless, whilst the 5B has onboard wireless, but no M.2 slot. Meanwhile, whilst the 5 and 5B are based on the slightly cut down RK3588S system on a chip, the 5 Plus uses a full RK3588. It also has an extra HDMI output, an HDMI input, faster Ethernet ports, and separate M.2 ports for a wireless module and an NVMe SSD. All three Orange Pi 5s are now available with up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, with prices currently starting at $85 for an 8 gigabyte Orange Pi 5. Regardless of the model, the RK3588 or 88S system on a chip, here hiding under my homemade heatsink, is octa-core with four 2.4 gigahertz A76 cores and four 1.8 gigahertz A55 cores. As we saw in the table, connectivity varies a bit between the different models, but they all have USB-C power, 3.5mm audio, full-size HDMI, MIPI CSI and DSI connectors for connecting a camera and an LCD panel, and at least two USB 2 ports and two USB 3 ports, one of which is in USB-C form factor. Finally, whilst there's no eMMC flash storage on this original Orange Pi 5, the 5B can be purchased with up to 256 gigabytes of eMMC flash storage, whilst the Orange Pi 5 Plus has an eMMC flash module socket. Turning to software, here we are on an Ubuntu desktop, which works very well indeed. You get a very good desktop computing experience on an Orange Pi 5. It's a powerful octa-core SBC, and this even extends to good streaming media playback in a browser. Other operating systems are also available. We can see here the official images, including Android, Debian, etc. There's also Armbit available, although personally I find that Ubuntu works best on an Orange Pi 5. 
And here in Ubuntu, even the Caden Live Video Editor works very well indeed. This is a very impressive. Look how it plays this transition. This is very good on an ARM single board computer. And while some other ARM single board computers, like the one we're about to look at, have also got good performance on the timeline in Caden Live, what sets the Orange Pi 5 apart is its rendering performance, because the Orange Pi 5, when rendering out my standard test edit, does so faster than on any other ARM SBC I've ever tested. And so there we are, the Orange Pi 5, a very powerful, a very impressive family of ARM SBCs. Guess what? At number one on my list, we have a banana. Well, OK, we don't have a banana. Far less surprisingly, we have the Raspberry Pi 5, which started to ship in the last week of October 2023. This new board comes with 4 or 8 gigabytes of RAM, with prices being $60 and $80 respectively. Hiding under the cooler, the Raspberry Pi 5 has got a new SOC, the BCM2712, which has four A76 cores clocked at 2.4 GHz. So, this is exactly the same A76 core specification we just saw on the Orange Pi 5, except that the Orange Pi 5 has four additional A55 cores on top of that. So, the Raspberry Pi 5 is not the most powerful ARM SBC on this list in terms of raw CPU power. However, it does offer excellent performance, in part due to the combination of the BCM2712 with a new chip called the RP1, which is also hiding under this cooler. And the RP1 handles I.O. and provides a lot more peripheral bandwidth, which in practical terms means we have much faster USB 3 ports, a much faster microSD card slot, faster MIFI ports down here for connecting a camera or an LCD panel, and we also have a PCIe connector, a ribbon cable connector, to which we'll be able to connect, for example, an M.2 hat or lots of other exciting things. In terms of other connectivity, we still have USB-C power, twin micro HDMI, but we don't have a 3.5mm jack. However, stereo audio is available on the standard GPIO header, and there are some pads down here where you can solder on a connector for composite video output if you don't mind taking your soldering iron to a Raspberry Pi to do things like, for example, retro gaming. Finally, the Raspberry Pi 5 does not have eMMC flash storage or a connector for eMMC flash storage. But what we do have is a new ARM SBC that has impressive and very well balanced performance already coupled with excellent software support. Indeed, if we go across to the Raspberry Pi OS desktop, we find a level of interface fluidity that beats anything I've ever tested on an ARM SBC, and which includes good 1080p streaming media playback in a browser. And therefore, as so often in the past, it's a very well executed combination of hardware and software that places the new Raspberry Pi in our number one position. So there we have it, my list of the top new single board computers 2023. But what do you think of my list? Please let us all know down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.